Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. In this video, we are here with Eladio Diaz and Klaus Kellner of Davidoff, and we're going to be talking a little bit about retro hailing, how to do it, and its potential pros and cons for your enjoyment of a cigar. So Klaus, I know you're going to help us translate here a little bit. So maybe you could ask Eladio, like, um, how are you actually retrohale? Entonces, eh, queremos hablar sobre eh, los pros y los cons de los contras de, de, de retrohaling, ¿verdad? De sacar algo mm -hmm. por la nariz. Pero la primera pregunta sería, ¿cómo se hace? Sí. Es sencillo. It's, it's simple. <laughs> it's simple to you. You're a, you're a master blender. But yeah. for some guys that are new to cigars, um, this is something they maybe haven't have tried um, and aren't familiar with. So your expertise would be much appreciated. Cuando uno succiona el humo. <clears throat> es poner la, la lengua en el paladar y automáticamente botar parte del humo que usted ha succionado entonces la otra parte la, la tiene por el retronasal o sea no permitiendo que llegue a, a la garganta entonces ahí estás percibiendo el nivel de fuerza del turno y los sabores que tienen los, los elementos ya combinados necesariamente para saber lo que es sabor y entender lo que es sabor Tiene que haber una combinación de la boca y la nariz. En la boca tiene cuatro gustos principales, nada más, cuatro gustos. Los otros sabores están aquí. La combinación de nariz y boca da sabor. El que no hace eso necesariamente no está fumando, está expiriendo humo, está botando su dinero. Fumar es combinar la nariz con la boca. Eso es fumar para saber lo que es lo que está percibiendo, qué sabor está percibiendo. So it says, to smoke, to enjoy a cigar, is palate and nose. If you're not, if you do not combine both elements, uh, you are not necessarily enjoying your cigar to the full extent. And uh, if not, you're just throwing smoke out of your mouth, and you have to combine these two. Here you have the smell, here you have the taste. When you add them both together, you get flavor. And that's, it's not just taste, it's both, it's flavor. Okay. And then he explains, you take the smoke into your mouth, right? You let some out of it, you let some out, right? You put your tongue up in the paddock, and then you basically push it out, retronasal, out of your, your nose, not allowing it to go to the throat and never into the lungs, especially. It's all here. Mm -hmm. So, but it's great to always let some out. That way, it's not the whole you know, smoke home. coming out of through the nose. Sure. Okay. That so way, it's not as impactful. So it's going through the olfactory cavity and then mm -hmm. getting the sensory buds there. Yeah, he explained that in the tongue, we only have four types of taste buds. Sweet, salty, acid, bitter. And this is not enough. The rest of the flavors, the rest of the taste, the experience is up here. The mm -hmm. rest of the taste is here. Okay. We actually have another video where Klaus and his father have taken us through a, uh, a tasting. So we'll put a, a link in the bottom below to show how um, cigars uh, are blend kind of activates all of those different points on the tongue and how to identify some of those different receptors. So, which is great. And what are, so the pros are obviously, um, in Eladio's case, to get the fullest experience out of the cigar. And I know you personally uh, don't retrohale. So what's your kind of take on the, 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 the pros and cons that you see personally? So I have a little bit of a different take on it. I agree with Eladio that you need both. You need the nose, you need the taste, the, the, the taste, the, the tongue. However, in my personal experience, especially with stronger cigars, with the stronger cigars, when I put pass it to the nose, 
it tends to overpower my palate and I can't erase what I'm feeling, uh, you know? So uh, I can retrohale sometimes with, some, with uh, softer cigars. With the stronger cigars, I tend to avoid it. And what I do is that instead of retrohaling, I do it indirectly, so I smell the smoke. Uh, we did that with the uh, Yamasa blend, the mm -hmm. Yamanai. Yep. Yeah, so there, there's a, another video. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of videos, but yeah, we, when we did the Yamasa, they're like little spicy tingle mm -hmm. from, from the, the smoke. And that way you get, in a, in a, in a similar way, not as intense, the, this, the, the aromas up here. This for the people that cannot retrohale, this is a great way to activate the senses up here, to smell the air. And it's less lighter, it's less indirect. And uh, when we do tastings, when we do seminars, mm -hmm. seminars, and I do a raise of hands, show of hands, how many people retrohale? We say that over 80% of the people do not retrohale. Sure. Right? Most people do not retrohale. So that's normal, it's not a bad thing. I mean, some people say 95% of the people do not retrohale. Yeah, it's very, it's very little, you sure. know. Yeah. But it is very important to uh, practice, learn, and if it's not for you, it's okay. But try to activate. So you may want to try on obviously a more mild cigar, like yeah. you say. If you're starting, si eres principiante, with a very mild cigar. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. Starting with that one off number two, for example. Sure. That way it's not gonna hit that pepper in your nose. Yeah, your bad, potentially bad experience, you can yeah. build up. Build up. And uh, as we've got uh, Eladio here, is there any other, I know he's a master blender, so this is, you know, 60 years of work, um, but is there any tips you can give for how people can, you know, taste and get more enjoyment out of the cigar? Si hay algún eh, consejo o un dato que nos pueda ayudar a los fumadores, a los principiantes, a cómo probar, un cigarro y aumentar su experiencia. Necesariamente para hacer el retro nasal, necesariamente tiene que ser con un cigarro suave y lo que son principiantes. Mm -hmm. Por ejemplo, en, en lo que en, co, corresponde al caso nuestro, con un David II número 2, un, un David II 2000, mm -hmm. un cigarro ideal para, para poder hacer un retro nasal a plenitud sin que le agreda ni le afecte. Ya un puro de más potencia ya sería, sería muy, muy cuesta arriba, muy difícil. No, necesariamente tiene que empezar, a hacer, para hacer eso, tiene que ser con un cigarro más suave, los que son principiantes. A, lo ya, a, a las personas que ya tienen más, eh, o sea, son fumadores de más tiempo, mm -hmm. lo pueden hacer con más facilidad, porque no es tan difícil. En realidad están, van a recibir a plenitud lo que es una fumada plena. Yeah, I'm going to follow up with another question. Sure. Uh, y para, y, y algún, algún consejo para disfrutar cigarros más? Particularmente yo prefiero fumar el cigarro cuando estoy solo. Porque no estoy solo, estoy acompañado de mi mejor amigo que es el puro. Me siento conversar con él. Escucho una buena música, un buen café o un trago y combino y, y hablo con mi amigo. Mi amigo me, siempre me responde y es muy fiel. Siempre me, me está respondiendo con la fidelidad que yo espero de él. Es la mejor forma de uno fumar un puro. Says, en mi concepto. En su concepto, personalmente, la mejor manera de enjoy un cigar is smoking it alone, enjoying a cigar alone. And he says he's not truly alone because he's with his friend. And he is able to analyze it and actually learn about it. There's a lot of distractions when you're with other people, right? And if you really want to learn and analyze a cigar, you got to do it with least distractions as possible. Alone, he says, he normally maybe puts on music, a coffee or a drink, and or, you know, the spirit and he's able to not be alone and enjoy the whole experience with his friend perfect well thank you very much again for your time uh Lario Diaz was kind enough to give us a full interview of his day-to-day -day life and some of his life experiences 
as the head blender here at Davidoff. So there'll be links above and below uh, to that particular interview, as well as uh, Klaus has uh, taken the last few days to show us around the entire Davidoff operation from the farms to the warehouses and the factory. And we have a uh, full length documentary that details our full experiences here in the Dominican Republic. So please watch out for those videos. With all of that being said, like the video if you did like it, subscribe to the channel to see future videos, and please add any comments or questions below that relate to this video or any other cigar questions that you may have. So thank you very much again, Eladio. You're welcome. Uh, with all of that being said, my name's Paul Anthony. I'm Klaus Kalner. Hello, yes. And we'll see you in the next video. Well, Charles Philippe and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please also check out the full length documentary of how Davidoff makes cigars. And down here, there's a full playlist of our whole Dominican experience.